Hey everybody, today is May 10th and this is the KCP community meeting. Welcome, glad to see everybody here. We do have an agenda issue as usual. I'm pasting the link into the Google Meet chat. Please feel free to uh, add comments for anything that you wanna add to the agenda. If you'd like to uh, say something, please use the raise hand feature in Google Meet. And uh, we've already got several things in here from Stefan, but again, please feel free to add anything. And I'm going to go through um, the first one. We always uh, skip over the incoming issues and whatnot and do those at the end. So I'm gonna start with the 0 0.5 epics and got a list over here. So Stefan, did you wanna walk through this or you want me to? I think Paul wants to. Or Paul. Right? Paul. Yeah, I can say a few words on it if you want to just keep sharing. Um, sure. We've agreed in the past to, to modify how we're doing our milestone planning as well as how we're breaking down tasks. So I was hoping for this meeting that we can walk through what the milestone blockers are and ensure that uh, one, we're comfortable with them fitting in the milestone and two, that we've got the right task breakdown and linked items on them. Uh, like we've discussed, just to make sure that we can see progress as they go. Um, I think, Andy, the epic one that's number two in that list is probably a good example if we want to start by looking at that and then sure. just go over the other ones. Not all of these are, are epics, so they probably all don't warrant like a full breakdown, but we should just agree that they do or don't. Yeah, so this current list, let me redo my filter here. This current list is everything that's a milestone blocker label. If I, and so there's eight, if I do take that label off, there's another 10. So I do think we want to go through all 18 ultimately. Would you agree based on the way we decided to redo things? Yeah, that is fine. And I also wanted to mention after we went through is that on this 18, there's some, there's two without a, a, an assignee, so those might be candidates to kick out if they're not actively being marked. Okay. Um, I'm going to start at the bottom, the oldest issues. The first one about designing and implementing cross-cluster listers and informers is under active development. It's part of this epic on multi-workspace controller development. And uh, I firmly plan to <laughs> do everything that uh, I can to help get this one in. So um, is that enough to, to say on that one or were you looking for anything would else? You, would you mind just opening it up and showing what it looks like in terms of the breakdown? Because I think that's another good one. The epic or this one? The epic. Okay, sure. That way folks kind of see what we're looking for. So I created this, I haven't, put demo bits and steps in yet, but for stories, um, we have adding a virtual workspace for API exports. This is uh, so that controllers can, uh, so the, the API workflow for an API provider that we want folks to work with is, I create an API resource schema, it's like a CRD, and it represents some API that I want folks to be using. I create an API export for my schema, and you can export multiple schemas. So I create an export, and then uh, users can go and bind to my export, which basically means they have access to those APIs that I've listed as API resource schemas. And so as the person or team writing the controller for those resources, we're going to have a virtual workspace that the controller connects to that shows it only instances of those APIs that we have uh, exported. So if you have two different teams that have two different workspaces and they're both exporting a widget API type, then team A, when they say, show me all the widgets across all the workspaces, we'll see team A's representation and instances for team A's widgets, and then the same thing for team B. So that's what this virtual workspace is about. The second one is making sure that we have uh, RBAC in place for uh, people using the virtual workspace. 
The next one is around authorization for API bindings themselves. So for example, if I am a regular user and I bind to a widget API that somebody is providing, I can't be allowed to modify the status of that widget, uh, or at least the, the API export owner and provider should be able to say what I can do in my workspace with those things. Then we have the, um, the client libraries for um, clusterware client sets for KCP and Kubernetes, as well as a code generator. And then the same thing for shared informers and listers. We want to restrict uh, wildcard listing and watching. So this is show me all widgets across all workspaces or all logical clusters. We call that a wildcard list watch. And we want to make sure that the only components that are allowed to do that when they're not going through this virtual workspace are internal KCP controllers. And then finally in here is being able to delete um, instances of APIs that come through an API binding when the API binding goes away. So that, that's what we have in here for stories. The idea is to have enough information about uh, a high level, but if we need to go into more detail, we can create individual issues for them. Um, some of these issues, like the code gen ones, predated the creation of this epic, and that's fine. Uh, it's also fine to go in the other order. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, so um, next one up is an oldie but goodie, <laughs> 280. Um, I do think we need to know what's left to do here. I think it was end-to-end -end tests and making sure that uh, things work <laughs> in every use case. So this is around transparent multi-cluster and I want to take a regular deployment for Tecton, whatever, and deploy it through KCP and make sure that it can be configured to talk back to KCP when it's scheduled to a workload cluster instead of talking to the workload cluster's API server. Should I just keep going, Paul? Yeah, that's fine. If did the uh, description of that one have the right breakdown on it? Do we need to? So this is, there's a lot of old stuff in here. Uh, there's a research item that is still open. There's making sure role, binds, role bindings are not copied down, which is really done already. So it's making an ETE that we're adding an ETE to make sure it works and we may want to add uh, the leader election issue. So if you are running a pod that uses leader election using client goes built in leader election or controller runtimes implementation of it, um, it doesn't work out of the box. So this has to do with, uh, so I, it has to do with, with this as well. So I might actually just add this as a, checkbox unless anybody objects. And Andy, since you mentioned blocker, do we have a way forward for that or something? I'm sorry, Ranjit, could you repeat that? I couldn't hear you. I turned up my volume. <laughs> sorry, my airports were not coming. Hear me now, Andy? Go ahead. Yeah, can you just repeat that, please? Yeah, so you mentioned blocker, right, for the end to end one do we have a way forward or for that one the blocker it just it, we need an end-to-end -end test written doesn't exist okay oh it's and not so it's like blocking that it's got it. they, there's a slack thread discussing the solution so it's ongoing in progress okay sounds good Thanks. yeah so i i think if we have the end-to-end -end test that is written so that needs to be written and if we can make sure that leader election is working, 
uh, I think we can probably close this out and writing the end-to-end -end test may uncover some bugs. I think my only question on this one is, Joaquin, you've got, I think, four other items assigned to you in this milestone. Is it realistic to have your name on this one? Probably not. <laughs> but the other one is hey, this. merged, right? The big one, advanced scheduling. Yes, I think the advanced interest. scheduling. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. The third one is the same. Just a task. Yeah. Uh, 758 and, was. And the first one in the list, I would unassign. Can I mean, anybody can do that, basically. Hold on. What? So we have making sure a sync deployment can contact KCP, but then we also have. Um, 758. They're kind of the same. That's the same. It's just a subtask. OK. Yeah, that makes sense. So Joaquim, are you comfortable committing to, to these for the milestone? Do you need help? Should we find someone else on the call that's willing to take up one of these? or? Yeah, no, that should be good. I mean, it's mostly writing the end-to-end -end tests and figuring out, well, what are the issues with the leader election. So I guess that's fine. I'm working right now on the first issue that you see, the ad super for Sinker, virtual workspace, blah, blah. But I guess that shouldn't take me too much because I have it working. I just need to. Um, clean up things and push it. So do we have anybody who could write this end-to-end -end test? It feels like it's nothing which needs a deep knowledge of the mechanism. So it's maybe a nice exercise to learn writing end-to-end -end tests. Yeah, God speaking. Um, I'm, I'm rather new to, to this entire topic, but I would try to pick this up. That's good. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah, and we're available to help. Um, so we, we have a fairly robust end-to-end -end framework that handles creating workspaces and getting you clients and things like that. But uh, if you're new to it, it probably has uh, a learning curve. So feel free to look at existing end-to-end -end tests. Feel free to reach out on Slack. We will happily help. OK, great. We'll do it. Thanks. So are we going to give? Was that 758 or 917 or something else that Gerd was signing up for? 758, which is a subtask of the last one. Okay. Are you in the board now? All right. Um, can you just comment on this one, please? And just so we know. 758, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, 758. Thanks. OK, I'm going to. That okay, are we good to move on to 333? Yeah, okay. So, this one was about prototyping exec, attach, logs, port forward. Which I know we have a prototype, but um, do we want to turn this into an actual implementation? That we and yeah, I would. I would leave it in this term like it's a prototype. Um, Antonio is working on a prototype to integrate it into the yeah, KCP API server, but we will see how it will look. So, so I what is the expected that. outcome of this? Like when do we to implement you? Probably to implement one of the stories. There are several which we have in the Google Doc to get logs of one pot, maybe something like that. If we get that in a normal KCP, we are done with this okay. ticket. Like and milestone blocker, 0 0.5, what are we looking at here? Uh, I wouldn't call it milestone blocker. 
it's RNG, so. But it's 0 0.5 for sure. Okay. So move on. Yeah. All right. Um, this is a factor out multi cluster concepts, is another one related to um, the. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna. This looks like in the in the milestone by accident. Yeah, I'm gonna put this in TBD. There's lots of work to be done, yeah. but I don't think it's it blocks us. Okay. Uh, cockroach investigation is the this one where we can finish the investigation this milestone or Steve what are you thinking about this yeah I think we've investigated everything we need to investigate um, there's some long tail here of like upstream work but I think that's probably best broken out into individual things I'll, I'll do this today okay so what do you want to do with this issue in terms of keeping it open versus closing and the milestone um, I will, I think I'll, I'll close it out today. And then um, I guess there's like one follow up is, is uh, some of the upstream work. Um, one follow up would be getting this into our KCP fork. Um, so I guess I, I would close this and then, and then open up the sort of concrete things. I'm not sure the sequencing of the rebase though. We've had some conversations about that informally. I wonder if we should sit down at some point and do something more formal yeah just to figure I mean, out like what I are we talk, doing for the cube rebase talked a little i think post the big integrations for virtual workspaces so which is probably in june but we should talk for sure okay that sounds good to me all right uh, review universal cluster workspace types are back i think this was just around the verbs we were. Yeah, this is my PR basically about Airbus. Um, I would call it TBD. It's not a milestone blocker, something okay. we should fix eventually. Sounds good. Uh, we talked about 758 already. We talked about code gen, follow up on API binding. So right now, when you create an API binding, if you're the first binding to reference a particular schema, we, the system will create a custom resource definition in a special logical cluster called system bound CRDs. And the CRD name is just a UID. Um, there are labels on there that have pointers back to where it came from. Um, so we need to figure out what format we want to use and what the maximum name length limits are. This will be a breaking change to whatever data is in at CD when we make a name change. So um, although we, we could make it backwards compatible where it could we could store or have it look at for the old name and the new name. Um, do we want to do this in 0.5? So you removed the good first issue label. I think with some assistance, this is not so bad, actually, if we find somebody. Uh, yeah, wants... I mean, I think it could be a good first issue once we uh, figure out yeah. the spec for what we want. So if anybody wants to look deep in server plumbing and how we use CRDs, would be a good one. I, I and I think Andy and I, DVD. Yeah, I think like so. we need to do it before we hit 1.0, but then, yeah. you know, when we want to stop wiping etcd for breaking changes, but I don't think we strictly need it this milestone. Agree. Okay. Uh, we talked about deleting CRs, service blocker, um, I mean, is this kind of more like a 1.0 blocker or how do you it want is. to? It is. Garbage collection is also something we should eventually add. 
Um, I mean, I do we how do you want to deal with this particular issue? Like this is kind of I don't feel like it's a 0 0.5 and right. it could just be like a 1.0 or we could get rid of it. I, think I would move it one release further. So we will hit it again next planning. Okay. I mean, that's kind of what the TBDs are. We need to go through all the TBDs. Uh, there are those time bomb things. We okay. need some way to not forget about them at least. Yep. Uh, Multi-release epic for TMC. Oh, this is the location work. So user can see location objects as projections and aggregations of workload clusters. The sinker uses them. And maybe we do some placement and whatnot. So these two things we need to do, and they're still in scope for 0 0.5, right? Yeah, the action items are a bit more concrete. Um, same thing, basically. Okay. Be honest. And is this only you working on this? Do we? Do you no, need help? that's Joachim. It's David and myself. Okay. At the moment, the big PR from David is blocking further work. That's a bottleneck. I've used. I'm heavily working on fixing comments, numerous comments, and very helpful ones. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm glad this one's coming up, advanced scheduling. This is listed as an epic and a milestone blocker. And I know that some of the work is done. So what's left? It's basically part of the previous one. When we have the full story merge, then we can do end-to-end -end testing. And this is what is missing here. OK, so I'm going to just put you two on this as well, Stefan yeah. and David. OK. Logical cluster, machinery refactoring. I definitely think we need to close this out um, in 0 0.5. It's it's not really feature work, but it is getting the code cleaner. So, um, and this is done. And I'm actually going to take Steve off and put Fabian on because that's who's working on it. And I think we're good on this one. All right. Replace all cluster name, get cluster name access with logical cluster packets functionality. So in Kubernetes 124, the cluster name field and object meta has been renamed to something like ZZZ log cluster name is deprecated. So we need to use annotations or labels or something that we have available to us that's not going to go away. And I think this is a time bomb. Um, definitely needs to be done before the 124 rebase happens. And I see Sean has volunteered for this one. So thank you, Sean. Any objections? Um, Stefan or Paul or anybody from including this in the milestone? No, it's fine. OK. And we talked about this one. It's a subtask. And then there's this one, which I think probably just needs to go into the multi workspace epic. Right, yeah. Stefan? Yes. Just link it. You had an item, I think, or a story for that. Yeah. Uh, Is it this one? Yeah, yes. OK, so that is everything that is listed in 0 0.5. So we got it down to 14 from 18. That's good. And some of them are sort of duplicates of each other. All right. Uh, anything else, Paul, that you wanted to go over before we move on? Does anyone not have work that wants work? We're going to close out the CRDB one. Steve, do you need something fun to work on? Yes. 
Um, okay, we don't have to figure it out on this call. I've got to drop anyways. But uh, if anyone else wants something to work on in 0 0.5 and is willing to put your name on it and commit to it, uh, please let Andy or Stefan or, or myself know or just ping in the public channel and we'll make sure we line something up. Yeah, I've been trying to um, get up to speed on all the reviews and figure out the lay of the land. All right, cool. So let's move on to get rid of these tabs here. Logos, Stefan. Yeah, everybody has seen the slides. I showed them quickly last week. Um, there's one new, so the last one, last slide or second last was added. Um, there's still space. So if anybody has ideas, please speak up. Um, my question is about how we proceed. So we could do some kind of voting either on the call or offline. And the question is how, I mean, concretely. Um, there are some things we should maybe discuss before, like I compared some of this, uh, the, the logos with the landscape from CNCF. So which are similar, um, there are many. <laughs> so you need some time to go over them. Some color combinations, they appear like 30 times or so. Um, cube, of course, cube as a concept, nested cubes are also there many, many times. So. I picked some which looked the most similar. And the question is, where's our, I mean, what is okay and what is not okay in similarity? So we should decide that this might disqualify some maybe, I don't know. And then yeah, about process. So in the meeting, my gut feeling is if we do it here, it's not inclusive because maybe some people cannot join because of time zone or other reasons. We can do it in Slack. Everybody might get a, vo a voice, so everybody can say this logo is good, so thumb up. Or this is, I don't like it at all. I would be embarrassed to, to wear a shirt with it or something. So it's a thumb down. And then we just count the difference, takes the two most voted for once and then do a second round and just uh, then choose one, something like that. There's a vote tool I heard, so somebody is writing. Yeah, I've, I've had experience with opening up issues and getting folks to vote on things in GitHub that can devolve as you might imagine. Um, I think trying to be as inclusive as possible across time zones and folks that may not have access to various parts of the internet would be ideal. So I don't know what the broadest reach is there. If it's GitHub issues or Slack, I'm not really sure. I feel like GitHub issues with reactions maybe. Has anybody seen that done successfully? That way it's just a URL. We can put the URL in Slack. We can send the URL an email, you know, et cetera. We did lazy contests like that for SIG testing for a long time. Seems to work okay. And it's like a comment per image or whatever, and people do a plus one or any sort of emoji counts as a reaction or as a vote. I don't know. Maybe so maybe we need a timeline for uh, when we'll stop collecting additional uh, possible logos or I don't know, just open the issue and put the comments in, like you said, Rob, and then have a, a deadline for when we want to have the voting closed. If anybody wants to own this process, um, would love to have some help. Yeah, I can make an issue. Um... What do we think? We think a week is enough. We think two weeks, less. Uh, isn't KubeCon next week? So it definitely needs to go beyond KubeCon. So if we open up the issue today and next week is a wash, we may want to say at the end of the following week or something like that. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. So Rob, you'll take point on that initially. Let's come up with a pretty far out date and that should be fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other comments on the logos before we move on? Um, should we decide about reservations around similarity? Is this something we should decide before? Or we do it when we have all logos next week or something? I think the general guidance that we probably should follow is try to avoid um, similarities where folks could be confused because we don't won't really want to have other folks coming after us saying trademark violation or whatever. Yeah, and I would say that limits to like pretty close similarities, like not just, oh, we can't use that whole color or whatever, but it like, you know, shapes and imagery when they start to get close. I think that's where we cut it off. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Stefan, next one is also yours on cluster workspace type. Yeah, so there have been discussions. Um, we noticed there is a need to rethink cluster workspace, uh, workspace type. Now that we mo know more what requirements are, how services might use that, how many we want. So the, the guidance or the idea is uh, it came out of discussions with, with Clayton, for example. This is nothing, a type is nothing where you will have 60 or something like that. It's more like a handful or two handful. Um, types will be created by KCP as a platform, but there might also be organizations who want types or maybe some opinionated, opinionated service might want a type. There is one super important rule and um, that's the second last line here with exclamation marks. Everything that a type does like controller, for example, which uses the initializers, should be possible to do manually in a universal um, context, like universal workspace. You should basically get, yeah, get the same result, like the same functional workspace with APIs. And in this PR, there are some ideas how to do that, like we can enforce that actually technically uh, in a virtual workspace, which checks that the user, everything that the controller does against this workspace where the initializer is uh, processed by the controller can be done by that user. So we can do subject access review or something like that and verify it. And that way we guarantee that it's enforced. Um, another thing what we came up with, so at the moment in the main branch, you need a type so the type object must exist in a workspace in that workspace where you want to create a workspace of that type which means we have code in place which replicates things like universal workspace types and organization workspace types so you have to know basically where you have to create those objects so they become effective um, there's the idea to move that up or to replace that mechanism by walking up the, the parent relation. So you go to the current workspace and if the type exists, you're fine. If it doesn't exist, you go one uh, up so to the parent and then to the root eventually. And at the root, you can also define types. So that's the first bullet point here, what we added. Um, we notice that initializers are cool, obviously, because you can do everything, but in many, many cases, it's just about creating manifests. And so we might want to add something like bootstrap manifests to the type. Um, the next thing is extensibility. Mm. It might be interesting for an organization to add more behavior to types which come from the system. For example, um, if there's a team a team type, for example, maybe every team needs a secret or a special API or anything like that. So maybe an organization wants to add that. So we need a mechanism for that. And in the proposal here, you would be able to create a cluster workspace type of the same name in your organization workspace. And there would be some merging happening. So when creating the object like the workspace, the controller behind will go up the chain, up to the root and merge 
things like initializers and um, other things which are inside the spec of the type. What else? Um, default workspace type. So people playing with what we have noticed that there's a distinction between organization and universal. So if you're at the root, you must pass minus minus type organization to the QCuttle command. And that's of, of course not obvious. So one idea is to have a default workspace type. So every time somebody creates in the workspace inside of a certain type, like, like an organization, it will be of type X, something like that. And this is the default and the reverse, the inverse is to restrict which types are allowed. Like if you are in universal, it does not make sense to create an organization. But the other way won't make sense. And um, I don't want to completely repeat it here, so read through the, the API proposal. I think it has a way to allow what we want, what is sensible, like adding more types, which are possible inside another type. But at the same time, this allows that somebody allows a placement in nesting, which the cluster workspace type owner does not really expect. This is an example of an organization in universal. We don't want that. So that's in, and last but not least, we are adding virtual workspace URLs everywhere at the moment. That's the last item here. So there's also a status being added and virtual workspace URLs. And the idea is that the controller which processes the initializer, like um, does in its initialization, will watch this list in the type it owns. And for every shard, you get a URL and watch cluster workspaces in there. It's a virtual workspace, so it will just show workspaces of your type and only those which are initializing. So you cannot access those when they are ready. When they are ready, they are, they are owned by the user, not by the controller anymore. That's also in, and I think that's it. Please take a look, um, much more powerful. It does not mean that we implement everything right away, but I think it's a good collection for, for much better types than it is today. Thanks, Stefan. I think um, it would be helpful if we went through and just maybe as comments on the PR, add some sample YAML for like, here's what you would put in the root and here's what you could put in an org and so on um, and just have some some samples in there a lot easier than coding up stuff <laughs> for starters right yeah so think through your service you have in mind whether you could do what you want via this mechanism there are constraints they are explicit they are intentional and the question is, does it block your work? And if it does, we have to talk. All right. Um, so we've got about 20 minutes left. That was the last item on the agenda. Before I move to looking at open issues that haven't been triaged yet, anybody have any topics, questions, um, anything you want to chat about? All right. Well, if you think of anything, feel free to um, reach out and speak up. So I'm going to go top to bottom here just to go through the newest stuff. So uh, thank you, Rob, for creating that. I'm going to skip over it for right now. Uh, we do have a new issue about the container image failing to start. Um, there is a PR for this as well. Uh, it looks like we have, we're trying to create the KCP data directory inside slash, and uh, that's not allowed. So uh, if you're running this via Docker or Podman or something, then you either need to, I guess, bind mount in a directory or work around it in some way. I know the manifest that we have in the repo, um, works around this. So 
I think this is nice to get in. Uh, I don't think it necessarily needs to go into 0 0.5. So I'm happy to put into TBD unless anybody um, feels strongly the other any other way. Nope. Okay. Um, and if you're interested in uh, helping out here, please feel free to take a look at the PR and add some comments. Okay, this one I added. Um, so we, we've had a couple times where uh, just accidentally we've merged in pull requests that have our Go mod pointing to a fork that's not the KCB dev fork of Kubernetes. So this is something that would be useful to um, catch that and not let it happen. So I have this under good for good first issue and help wanted if anybody is looking for uh, something that would be really, really nice to get in. Um, but it's definitely not a milestone blocker. So TBD is probably where I'm going to throw it. Uh, as always, please speak up if you <laughs> disagree. Uh, at times, this feels a lot like monologuing. So um, next up is around a confusing error message when trying to list workspaces in an org workspace that does not exist. So the example here was you just start up KCP, you try and ask for uh, workspaces in some random uh, logical cluster and you get the workspace sum org is forbidden because root workspace access is not permitted and this error message is not clear <laughs> in any way. And Stefan has a comment about what we can't do. So um, I don't know that this is necessarily a good first issue, but it is a experience blocker. Any thoughts on milestones, Stefan? TBD? T TBD. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, that's another one of mine. Um, adding tests that cube types added as CRDs show the expected columns. So we have some uh, custom wiring in place so that if you pull in a CRD for something like deployments, that it shows just like a normal deployment as opposed to what a CRD looks like uh, by default. So this is just to make sure we don't regress uh, as we're rewiring and rebasing things. So I think this could be a good first issue. Wanted. And I know that um, we do have some folks who are working on that for some internal testing, but I think this should be in the repo too. Uh, let's see, we had a request to be able to undo the work that the Cube control KCB workload sync command does. So this is nice to have, but TBD as well. Uh, and just to reiterate, everything that's going into TBD basically means that we've triaged it. And we think it's something we want to do eventually, but it's not scheduled to a milestone. Um, basically, we're trying to keep the 0 0.5 milestone as small as possible so that we can be realistic about what we can accomplish. And um, we can always add things if there's time, but we want to err on the side of just sticking things in TBD. And then when we come around to planning for the next milestone, we can pull things in. Um, so this one is making sure that we store custom resources in the right locations because normal custom resources go into a pattern in NetCD that looks like this, and um, bound CRs go into um, a different place. This is actually resource. Right. So upstream has tests which check etcd. There's an etcd client that things in etcd really look like we expect. Open should has the same. And I think we had a time now as a project where we should have that as well. It's kind of a safety net 
for regressions because if the path changes of something, this basically means data loss for the user. Okay, I'm gonna also put that in TBD. Um, do you think this is a good first issue or is it a little bit more complex? Yes, there are two examples of those tests. So people can build them, but it's super detailed work. Like it must okay. be very precise. And I'm just gonna leave help wanted on there. Yeah. Um, data race in component base. I updated the title on this one, Stefan, to say that it's when you're running tests with an in-process server. Um, I, so that basically this happens because if you're running KCP in process and the tests are running in parallel in the same process, you can end up with multiple KCP servers that are started and the startup code and logic is really meant to be single process only. So in this example, there's a log format registry that uh, you should only call freeze on it once. And if you're running multiple KCPs in process, it'll get called multiple times. This is really just a testing issue, I think. Um, I, like when I'm testing locally, I spin up a, manual, a server outside of the test process, either in my terminal or in my IDE for debugging. And then I start up the testing and tell it to use the external server. So I don't run into this, but um, it, it, it is there. I would, again, probably just go TBD on this one. Unless you think we should close this stuff on or anyone. I'm not blocked. So for me, it's cosmetics. All right. Um, I can leave it open. It's in TBD. Uh, this was one I added that I still think we need to do, which is just document what it takes to add an API group, an API type, validation, controllers. Um, I'm going to put this in TBD and I'll even put help wanted. Oops. Keyboard working today. Okay, we have another issue about setting up CI for our fork of Kubernetes. Um, I think we, I don't know if we could get this done in a GitHub action with the compute they have there, or if this needs to be something beefier, but um, Steve, you're not actively working on this, I assume. You and your puppy. Uh, I'm not, I think if, so, Compiling at a minimum, I think, could probably be done in an action. I think it depends on the velocity we want in there. I think I imagine it'll be pretty slow to run EDE. Compilation, I can't imagine, will be too much worse than what we have in KCP today. So it's sort of transitively compiling it all anyway. Yeah. Um, but I think, uh, let's put this on the list of things to talk about in June, like Stefan said with the rebase. OK, thanks. I don't know if we want to, if this one is ready to be closed, but we we had the deployment splitter, the ingress controller that were standalone controllers that run against KCP. They were written before we had um, the syncer and the namespace scheduler working the way that they do now. So I think the deployment splitter is maybe broken today. Uh, we don't have any tests around it. So, and I know that the, the work that David and Joachim and others were doing with the syncer virtual workspace also handles deployment splitting. So I filed this to make sure we figure out what to do with these long-term. I think we have yeah. a plan beyond transformation. So David has a transformation concept. So it's yeah, and, and the, the last um, feasibility checks or validation that I did before starting, you know, making the peers in a good shape, 
uh, it also included the the ingress controller in fact so um, it, it mainly supported the whole um, scenario with deployment splitting and ingress splitting that follows the deployment and services okay so is so, this basically so let me comment any um deployment splitter and ingress controller they are basically demonstrations of a concept and they will eventually go away okay. yeah. so it's cool that they work with transformations um, medium term there will be something like a strategy for placement which supports multi-cluster and at that point we will have something we call today a coordination controller which does this kind of splitting like there will be a controller which supports multi-cluster setups and can deploy workloads on both sides for example that's the splitting part yeah which Using means that sorry which means that in other words it would not be a, a dedicated command anymore but yeah. just a, uh, one man among many options uh, of sending workload to to workload clusters. So to make it actionable, I would convert this into a subtask of the uh, what's the name, the big epic, the multi release yeah. epic. Call it mm -hmm. something like repair deployment split and ingress controller for the moment before the big thing will be implemented. How about if I? close this and we create a new a subtask and or issue yeah. for this yeah because yeah i i had already i mean in the third tier i mean so the that should follow the basic virtual workspace one the one with the transformation and strategies i had also changed the, the i mean patch the code of the deployment speaker and and uh, ingress controller to not create leaves anymore and just you know use the um, okay, so the, David, the can you just get this captured somewhere? Yes, I mean, I can I can add a comment in this issue, or or we create a new one as as, as you want. I mean, it, it, whether it's a subtask or an issue or both doesn't really matter. But I think like yeah. we we've decided there is a path forward, yeah. and sure. this issue was about figuring out what that path is. So if you can yeah. just um, sure. Add a subtask, add an issue, whatever. Uh, mm. Thank you. Yeah, I do that. Okay, we have five minutes left. Um, I think we should just keep going. So, protect, protect GBR creation automatic consumption by controllers. This goes away when. So, this is basically a subtask of the multi. Um, Multi workspace epic. Yes. I'm just going to leave that open and I will come back and do it. Uh, cross namespace service DNS resolution and physical clusters. So if you've got uh, a pod and you're running code in the pod and it references a service in another namespace using in cluster DNS then that works with normal clusters. It doesn't work in KCP synced clusters because we've changed the name of the works or the name of the namespace that the other service is in. Uh, and also the namespaces maybe could be on different clusters. Um, I think this is probably part of some networking conversations um, definitely needs to be dealt with, but later. All right. Uh, ability to remove a workload from a physical cluster. So this was an example. I've got a global load balancer that currently is configured to point at things running on a workload or physical cluster. And I want to take that cluster down for maintenance or delete it. So I want to drain my connections to the pods, wait for that drain to finish. Then I can remove my workload from the physical cluster. And so this is around finding some way so that KCP knows when the 
workload is able to be removed. You are lucky that's part of advanced scheduling, basically the state machine doing that with finalizers and stuff. So okay. the, the mechanics we are just building or have merged partly already. Just gated by a sort of feature gate, I mean, on the sinker side, but it, the code is there. OK, so is this something that we want to add to KCP, or is this more we've got the building blocks so folks who need to use them can do so? I think the only bit which is missing is the namespace removal, but object removal and also the whole life cycle on both sides, that's what we have, plus draining and cordon and so on. I saw PR today even for a command. Yeah. So I think, yes, it's something we want to do, and we are near. OK, so I, I think we need to probably present how this could be implemented using the finalizers with the advanced scheduling, and then yeah. we can probably close this. Yes. David, can I add a comment here for you to come back and do that at some point? Or I'll just. Try to document all of that in the advanced scheduling PR thing. Okay. I don't know if that's enough, but there is a big chunk of how to trigger the functionality and how to test it, etc. I think in the in the big epics there is a subtask for demo and documentation of coordination controllers and stuff. It's probably yeah. part of that. Um so this one I'm gonna put in 0.5. Yeah. And I'm gonna assign to David, Stefan, and Joaquin. And the the expected outcome of this is um, providing information about how to do this, but not to actually have anything around um, draining and workload cluster remove or workload removal in tree or in repo. Okay, we are at the hour. So thank you, everybody. Hope to see you next time. Um, as always, please feel free to ask questions and add to the agenda. And hope you have a good Tuesday and a good rest of your week. Uh, real quick, do we want to cancel next week since it's KubeCon? Maybe we'll take that to Slack and mailing lists. All right. Um, see you all next time. All right, catch you later. Bye.